I don't know what it is about SteelSeries gaming mice, but they always seem to fit my needs almost perfectly. But after the side grips began to fall off my 310, I decided to try something different, eventually settling for the Corsair Night Sword, but I was never truly happy with that. So can the Rival 600 be my new favourite? Let's find out. Now this mouse isn't exactly cheap, retailing for about 149 Aussie and roughly 80 US. So what does it offer to justify this price? Well, let's start off with the tour and see. A couple of features to mention are a 1000Hz polling rate, which is pretty standard, up to 12,000 CPI, a dual sensor, which I'll talk about a bit later, 7 customizable buttons, and up to 50 Gs of acceleration, which no one should really care about in all honesty. On the left are three long but narrow side buttons, with the top two being easy to reach, but the front one I found I nearly had to scooch my whole hand up to reach it comfortably, but I can reach it while maintaining my normal grip, but it's incredibly painful to stretch my thumb that far to do so. I'm a little disappointed that the side grips are covered in smooth rubber. Even though it's incredibly soft, I'm a big fan of the texturing on the Rival 310's grips and felt they were perfect in my opinion, at least when they were attached. I have noticed these side grips are starting to suffer the same fate, as parts of them are beginning to separate from the mouse body, which is just sad to see that this is still an issue, but SteelSeries is offering replacement side grips to people affected. On the right hand side is more of the soft touch rubber, which surprisingly still manages to do an excellent job of helping to maintain your grip, even if your hands are wet. Out the front is a removable 2 meter rubberized cable, terminating into a steel series marked USB Type A connector on one end, and a micro USB Type A on the other, which fits tightly into a little housing, so there is no real chance of accidentally pulling this cable out. This is a strange addition that seems a bit unnecessary, especially since this is a wired mouse and requires this cable to operate, Unlike the Rival 650, which is the wireless version, it would only require the cable to charge. The left and right mouse buttons are concaved and satisfying to click, with SteelSeries own switches rated for 60 million clicks, which is a damn good effort. The mouse wheel is plastic with rubber coating, which is a little bit slippery if you are scrolling lightly, but does have well-defined scroll steps and what I would describe as the perfect amount of actuation pressure required. Behind that is only a single pesky, just out of reach CPI button. Bit of a shame it's only one and not two, but you can only have two different CPIs set at a time, which doesn't bother me, but is something to consider if you like to swap between a few. On the palm area is the SteelSeries logo, and it's one of eight individually controllable RGB zones, with the other seven being the scroll wheel, and three separate sections each on two strips running down the left and right hand middle of the mouse, but we will talk more about lighting later. On the bottom is three, what I would call small in my opinion, Teflon feet. But I have to say, they do an excellent job of allowing this mouse to seamlessly glide along my mouse mat without issue. In the middle is two, yes, two sensors. One is a TrueMove 3 optical sensor, which is currently by far my favorite sensor. And the second is the depth sensing linear optical sensor, which is solely responsible for measuring how far off your surface you have lifted the mouse to know when to kick the main sensor back in to stop that little amount of mouse movement when lowering it back down. This can be adjusted in SteelSeries software, and I have to say, I love this feature, but a few people have complained that moving the sensor over dimples or holes in their mouse mat, or even certain surface textures, have caused tracking issues, but didn't experience any of that. The mouse is made from fiber reinforced plastic, which makes it incredibly sturdy, and the majority of the body has a soft touch rubber coating, which unfortunately displays skin oil residue easily. Both side grips are removable and held on by strong magnets, which actually makes it a bit tricky to remove these easily. Behind the grips are four mounting points on each side to insert the included eight 4 gram weights, which come in this little rubber pouch you can wrap around your USB cable for safekeeping, which you know some people are going to immediately lose if they don't. 
I love mice with customizable weights, but I have to say, for this price point, you should sort of expect this feature in my opinion. Size wise, the mouse is 131mm long, 69mm at the widest point, and 43mm high, which makes this mouse more suited for medium to large handed gamers. Weight wise, the mouse is 96 grams by default, but can be adjusted all the way up to 128 grams with all the included weights attached, which definitely pushes it into the heavy category. The mouse shape curves down to the left at the palm area, making it only really suitable for right handed gamers, although I found the curve wasn't dramatic enough to be uncomfortable when holding the mouse with my left hand, but the inward curve near the side buttons did feel a little strange when resting my fingers there. Let's talk about lighting now. The colours are fairly vibrant but inconsistent between the zones, with the scroll wheel being the darkest area and the tops of both lines on either side being the weakest. The colour options available are steady, with each zone being able to display its own single colour. Colour shift can be set to multiple different colours per zone and has speed control. Multicolour breathe is basically the same as colour shift, except that it will fade to black between colours. Reactive key will light up a single colour per zone for a set period of time, which you can change from 1 second to 10 seconds. And finally, you can just outright disable the lighting altogether. One thing to note is you actually have to select all the zones or the zone you want to change before making the change, which I find a bit weird as most other software auto selects all the zones by default, then you can select a specific zone or zones you want to change. And also, don't forget to save the changes once you're done. Finally, all the technical junk is out of the way, it's time to talk about my gaming experience. I first warmed up my aim with a bit of CSGO custom aim training map, and despite not gaming for a while, I was popping heads with ease after a few minutes, but mind you, not overly fast or snappy. Next up is the cesspool that is Modern Warfare multiplayer, which I managed to find my shot quite easily, never felt like I struggled to aim in either tight quarters when everyone is hopping about, or at long range trying to hit a pixel perfect shot. Software is the last thing to cover, and this mouse uses SteelSeries Engine 3, which is probably my favourite in terms of my software, as it isn't an overcomplicated mess full of options nobody in their right mind would use. Looking at you Corsair. Basically, everything you need is on this one page. You can change the functionality of every button. Launch the macro editor. In the centre is a small diagram displaying where each button is located, with two different view options. On the right, you can adjust your two CPI levels from 100 to 12,000 in increments of 100, change your lift-off distance, acceleration and deceleration, angle snapping, and polling rate. There is a second tab up top called illumination, where all your lighting effects are located, which are fairly simple to understand. And finally, down the bottom left, you can save your current configuration or import one from somewhere else. It's conclusion time, and I guess by now you can probably tell, despite not being a fan of the side grips, as I really wish they'd use the same ones from the Rival 310, this mouse is so much better than the Night Sword in my opinion, so I would definitely be replacing that. If you are after a wireless version of this mouse, there is the Rival 650, which is about 170 Aussie or 120 US, which is something to consider as the stigma behind wireless mice being inferior for gaming is basically void with something like this. So for now, I will continue to use this mouse, but I'm going to keep looking, as it isn't quite perfect for my needs. But, I have to admit, it is damn close, and this is probably a placebo effect, but I just love this sensor for some reason, and it makes me feel more confident in my shot when using it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing for more reviews and other content in the future. If you have a suggestion, question, or criticism, leave a comment, and thank you very much for watching.